Join me right now in welcoming Leslie Ann Warren. Thank you so much for taking this time out. Oh, you're welcome. Let me tell you how much I enjoyed Victor Victoria and ask you if it, um, first of all, was a challenge for you, and after the challenge was over with, was it fun to do? It was an incredible challenge for me, absolutely. I had never um, done a character like Norma, and I had never transformed myself physically to such a degree. Um, uh, and I had never concocted someone who was so completely uh, devoid of any of anything I could identify with, me, Leslie, you know? So yes, it was an incredibly tra challenging. It also was unbelievable fun. I mean, I had a fantastic time. It was one of the best working experiences I've ever had. Was that largely because of Blake, do you think, Blake Edwards? Absolutely, yeah. He is, a, I mean, he's a genius, you know, and he's always been one of my favorite directors. Uh, I think I saw Breakfast at Tiffany's like 11 times, yeah. you know, and Days of Wine and Roses. I mean, I just, I think the man's incredible, and um, the he creates an atmosphere for actors that's rare, you know. It's, it's a it's, it's very supportive atmosphere. He engenders a kind of confidence um, in him and in oneself that allows you to go the distance, to do things that you would be normally inhibited about, you know, uh, to be as inventive as you possibly can, because he's so supportive and appreciative. I mean, I would do things and he would literally fall off his chair during a take laughing, you know. And when you see the director responding that way, you just, you know, you'll do anything. You know, you'll, you'll try anything. You know, there are those directors who won't allow that kind of mm -hmm. input. I know. It's, it, you know, and that's not to say that the other way is not valid. Mm -hmm. I, I just finished another film with David Hemmings as a director, and he was telling me stories about making Blow Up, blow, you know, the, sure. the very famous film mm -hmm. he, was, he did years ago. Um, and Tony Oni, I guess, was the director, a, 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 you know, another incredibly talented, gifted artist who would literally choreograph him picking up a glass of water. I mean, it was, you know, the entire... On the count of three, it will be here. And yes. Yeah. And, you know, that's just another approach. Uh, this, Blake's particular approach was very freeing for me. And I feel like I've done some of my best work, you know. I moment. would think as an actor, it would be inhibiting to work the Antonioni way. Yeah. Because you're, how, how do you feel you're contributing if you're being told every step of the way what to do? Yeah. Um, I would venture to say that that's true, but then there are those directors who have uh, such a clear, precise uh, perception of what they want on the screen, and it is their their uh, stamp and mm -hmm. point, of, point of view, you know, and that is that is extremely valid. As we know, Hitchcock worked that way, and we exactly certainly can't right. deny the uh, exactly rooms right. of his films. Yeah. Um, since this program originates from Atlanta. I must ask you about um, the musical version of Gone with the Wind, which you did, playing Scarlet. Must you ask me about that? I no, think it's okay. <laughs> the, no, the I'm score, kidding. I think the score is in many ways quite, quite lovely. It is for beautiful. That. It was uh, Harold Rome did mm -hmm. some, uh, some wonderful things. Um, and I'm just wondering what was the, the, the real problem with it in that it didn't. Uh, you know, it, it, it was interesting. Audiences loved the, the, the uh, show, and, and you know, they, the public loved it. The critics did not like it, um, and what they seemed to, um, to say about it was that it was a, a pageant. It, there was too much going on on the stage and too much, uh, too, too, too much focused in in a, in a two-hour period. Um, that made it um, convoluted and confusing. Um, you know, we, we spanned 12 years in the war, yeah. and there was a horse on stage and an operative train, you know, and it, and it was a very heavy prop show, technically speaking. Um, the actors tended to get lost in the, the pageant of mm -hmm. it, in the pageantry mm -hmm. of it, and I think that that was probably the biggest um, detractor, because the music was lovely. Yeah. We were probably dealing also, I think critics are always out for something like that when it's based on, uh, on something like Gone with the Wind. Yeah, you're dealing with a classic, sure. you know, and, and nobody wants you to, to futz around with the classic, yeah. and that's understandable. Um, 
you know, remakes are, in any form, are, are treacherous. Yeah. Um, you don't, people don't want you to fool around with their memories. Yeah. You know, so I think that that was probably another problem as well. I must ask you in, in the time remaining about um, your views on uh, musical theater today, since you, when you, one of your first big hits was, of course, Cinderella and that wonderful Rodgers and Hammerstein score. And you've done some wonderful uh, musical material in your career. And the music in Victor Victoria is quite good. How do you think the current state of the American musical theater is today? You know, compared to what it was. Yeah, I haven't been to a Broadway show in years. And I don't really feel um, justified in giving my opinion in that area. Uh, I go to the theater a lot in Los Angeles. Um, I haven't seen, I haven't seen, um, you know, an original musical, though, in a very long time. So I don't really feel qualified. Uh, the theater that I've seen, uh, I, I think, has been innovative. I saw Children of a Lesser God, a wonderful mm -hmm. play that originated with the Mark Taper and then went on to Broadway, and you know. Um, so I think that there's a lot of, you know, important, intelligent, dramatic work being done. But because I haven't seen musicals, I don't feel willing to. But music, musically speaking, I think we could safely agree that we don't have the kind of shows that give us five and six and seven classic songs from them as the Rodgers and Hammerstein shows, the Cole Porter shows, et cetera. I mean, Evita, for me, was a stupendous sure. piece of work, you know. It's not a sing-along score, you know. And it, and it seems like the, the, uh, the musicals today are not willing to, to put music in just for the sake of it. You know, it's very important to integrate it into the piece. Consequently, I'm not sure that you'll get those kinds of um, classic songs mm -hmm. out of the musical. You know, I don't know if that's, you know, bad or good. I, I, I'm, I'm wondering, too, if it's because we don't have people like Richard Rogers or Cole Porter or Jerome Kern. Uh, I mean, sure, we have Stephen Sondheim, who is yeah, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, but I think everybody would agree his lyrics are probably superior to his music. Yeah. Um, That's so true. I mean, the younger composers today are in, are in an entirely different vein, and they're yeah. not writing the Broadway musical. Exactly. You know? So it's um, what you're saying is, is accurate. I guess I, I just would, would like to have something again, like maybe a South Pacific or a Kiss Me Kate or something. But uh, I mean, the proof is that it's all revival theater. Yeah, you know, sure. that's that's it's exactly what you're saying. You know, that we're falling back on the old musicals. To I can tell everybody who's watching if they want to hear some good music to go see Victor Victoria because Mancini's songs are delightful. Aren't, aren't they wonderful? They are. Yeah, Crazy World, the ballad he wrote, <sighs> is beautiful. It I, mean, is. I think that will be a classic. Yeah. We are out of time. I want to thank you so much for taking this time out, and I hope to see you again. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I heard you, Norma. I heard you. Look, I just don't know what you're so burned up about. Thank you. I mean, it was a perfectly natural mistake. Knock it off, Norma. Well, Squash thought he was a woman. If you think about it, it's really very funny. He isn't bad enough, but I knew he was a man right away. It's competing. I don't care how clever those costumes are. I mean, there are just some things you cannot say. I mean, even with all those hormone shots and everything, a real woman can always tell. Can you imagine what Sal and Daddy would say if he knew his partner fell for a female impersonator? Huh? Oh. Check under the bed? Yes. Hmm. You know, I know he's supposed to protect you. But does he have to stay in the same suite with us? I mean, I, I just keep expecting him to break in while we're, uh, while we're making love. He'd only do that if he heard something unusual, like if I got excited. Will you, will you take a jerk? Listen to me, you creep! You and your ideas, why don't you?
you'd take her to Paris with you, boss. I just thought she'd help you relax. She never help me relax. Well, then send her home. Why don't you ever come up with a really good idea? For instance, you send her home. Thinks she can just push me around. Thinks I'm just gonna hop on your next boat for the stage and now I'll be back. Well, you've got another thing coming, Mr. Big Shot. Fairy Martian. Because Mrs. Cassidy's little girl, Norma, ain't gonna take this one lying down. No! 